the big no. We bless our four year old tonight. We greet you Shalom again on the blessed evening as we get ready to go in and celebrate the word of God on tonight. Amen. I've been mean, excited about the, the celebration of the word of God on tonight. We bless the Lord for the pastor on tonight. So just bring the thanks of God Almighty to all again to our elder brother, to our brother, to all of the saints, our brother, and all of the saints of the most high God. We're gonna get ready to go. Let one of these guys, uh, what time is it? 821. I'll tell you what, come on, I'll, that'll give me a time. Go ahead and do a song, and uh, that'll give me a time just to get my get myself just together for just a second. But come on, Saint, come on, daughters. Uh, I just want to have you just sing in the presence of our God, and then just, just give, it, give it a short moment. We have to get into the word of God. But uh, come on, uh, come on, those just want to sing in the presence of our God. Come on, you can just leave this, leave this stuff up here first.
all that come in late. God bless each of you for coming in just so late. We thank God for you. We just truly appreciate you. Just glad for your presence on today, on tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Listen, let us pray as we uh, come on, Elder Duncan, quickly. Come on, pray for us, and then we're going to get ready to go right on into the Word of God on tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes, Shalom Shabbat. Uh, Heavenly Father, just again, that you are blessed and allowed us a blessed opportunity to come on the eve of the Sabbath into the temple. We are grateful, and most certainly, we are thankful. Certainly, to come off our lips to be thankful and to be grateful as the uh, priest, as he informed us with his account, he done. Most certainly, Hezekiah was one that among the few, among the few that obeyed thee. And most certainly, one that to sanctify the peoples. And most certainly, to pray God grace. Most of all, that we understand his grace, his covenant, what he had. He prayed that we offer, and most certainly, then they were offering in animals and shed in blood. We appreciate you fulfilling John 3, 16, and then 17, you came not to condemn the world, but that might be saved. In other words, to yield and to be thankful unto thee. We thank you so much. Continue to lay your hand upon your servant, the priest, to give unto us the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God, to spread it to the world. And then the end, it will come. We thank you so much for the woman that anointed the feet of our Savior. A memorial, what he, she done for thee. We thank you so much. In your son, Emmanuel, the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give a shout out. Hallelujah, saint. Truly, we bless God for you on tonight. Again, we greet you shalom to all of those that are viewing us. Truly, we thank God for you, Sister uh, Isom. God bless all of you all. Sister Emra, God bless you. And to all others that's, that's, that's viewing us already, we're grateful and thankful to each of you all that, uh, that's viewing us on tonight. Listen, we come tonight uh, again at this time, this season, where a lot of people are looking forward to what they're, and they call it so many times, resurrection. Some people that call it Easter and just all kind of things. But listen, we come in this season, the time that God have commanded us to come for him, for him, to seek his face all the more in this time. And I would say more this time in this season, these three times a year more than any other time because of what he wants to do in our lives. And I said that the, I said the other night when we celebrated the new year, the coming in, the first day of the first month, the new moon. I would be less than a man of God if I didn't let you know the things that God are doing. If I didn't at least lay it before you to give you an opportunity to go before the people. God asked Abraham, asked the question, shall I hide the thing that I'm doing in the earth from my servant? Amos said God is not going to do nothing down here where we at unless he reveal it to his servants. And say, you are, we, we all are. John, John in Revelation chapter 1, when John went out on the Isle of Patmos to get the word of God, the Bible said not only what this sent, that he sent this uh, uh, for understanding with John, but for all of the servants of the Most High God. Whom are we? That's all we have to do is do the thing that he called a Dane and set for us to do to receive. I was telling one of our sisters today how I thank God, thank God, saints, for understanding of his whole word. I wouldn't take nothing for it. We, we quoted, we read a scripture to you. To let, and come on, get it from me real quick. First Chronicles chapter 12. 
Again, I would be less than a man of God. And you don't see me, you hear me using the word preacher and some of those other titles, but I fulfill all of them. Even to the one, if, if, if you want a doctor within the word of God. God has blessed me with wisdom and knowledge and understanding over these things. First Chronicles 12 and 32. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. What did we have? Understanding of the times. I have understanding of these things. things. And my job is what the scripture says. To know what Israel ought to do. To let you know what you ought to be doing and when you ought to be doing it. So this is what we bring you on tonight. God bless you, my brother. We come tonight, God the Father. I want to show you this, and we're going to kind of pick up from what we, and we're going to be in this all the way through this season, saints. We got at least 22 days of you hearing these things, me mentioning something about what God is doing in this season. I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be the, the, the second part of this message, picking it up from the new year where we was the other night. I want to give you some things to at least go before God on from what he promised you. If someone left you a will, your great, great, great granddaddy left you a will and they signed it just for you and you didn't know anything about it, there's a good chance that you won't ever get it. And it could be something that you need. I'm going to lay some things at your feet tonight because of all of the need bees that you have. We're going to talk tonight, God the Father promised blessing in this Passover season, the first month of the year. I want to show you that on tonight, and I want you to go with me and take time as we look into this. God the Father have promised blessings in this Passover season, the first month of the year. Let me show you that on tonight. Let's start this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We looked at this a little bit the other night, a couple of these scriptures. But let's start this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. Read it. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Do it again. To everything. To what now? Everything. Once again? Everything. To everything. There's a season and there's a time to every purpose under the heaven. Let me deal, it, let me deal with you with it. Verse number four said, 14 said? Verse 14. I know that whatsoever God do it, it shall be forever. If God established time and season, how long do time and season last? Forever. If God established time and season, how long do it last? Forever. Come on, read it. Nothing can be put to it, mm -hmm. nor anything taken from it. Listen, if God told you that he going to bless you in this time and in this season, can't nobody take that away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't, don't be deceived by people. And listen, you don't have to pay God the seven blessings of the seven for the Passover season. You don't have to pay God. How, how can you? Someone close that back door for me. Did somebody just went out of the door. No, I didn't nobody go in. Thank you, the wind. Just make sure it wasn't closed all the way up. Listen, how can you buy a blessing for God? <laughs> Come on, what, what you going to give him? And the thing that he said that he required of us, don't nobody want to do that. Oh, uh, Deuteronomy 10. Oh, man, what is it that God requires of you? All he asked us, and when you look in the text, he said, I didn't, and, and even with Christ, he said, burn off and his sacrifices. I never desired that stuff. What can you give him? What can you give somebody that owns everything? He didn't require that. What he required for us, most people don't want to do, to love him and keep his commandment and love your fellow man. Mm -hmm. Read it. Verse number 15 says, or did you read and, it? Uh, I got to finish 14. All right, come and, on. and God doeth it that men should fear before him. Why did he do it? That men should fear before him. Uh -huh, read it. Verse 15. That which had been is now. And that which is to be had already been. <laughs> and God required that which is past. Listen, nothing have changed. Yes, sir. Time and season have always been here. I showed you in the, in the word of God the other night where everybody else was in preparation for this. They went up on the first day of the first month and sanctified themselves or purified themselves. You know why? They had an engagement with God not to keep Easter. But on the 14th day of the first month to renew a blood covenant 
that you were in with your God. Let's look at this in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. We looked at it the other night. I want to show you why things are so messed up and people are not aware of time and season. Let me show you who have changed in the mindset. He didn't change it in God's order. But let me show you who have changed time in the mindset of man. Read it, brother. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Listen, Satan's going to talk against God, but he's going to wear out the saints. Not going to harm God at all. Think about it. When Satan spoke against God to Eve, who did it affect? <laughs> the saints. Did it didn't affect God at all. It affected who, son? The saints. And the saints are still being affected from it today. You know why? How many of you all have ever had children? Did you have any pain at all? Any? Listen, I know. I Listen here. I know. I wanted to be off all day today. But listen, just so happened I had to work at least a couple of hours. Had the other guys out there longer. You know why? <laughs> the Bible said... From that that I came from, and if I had to go back, I'm going to have to work if I want to eat and have creature coffee. It didn't have to be that way. So we're still suffering from that today. Satan changed the time. Finish your verse. And, to, and think to change time. Do it again. And think to change time. Listen, he did it in the mindsets of people. But what God did in the actually is forever. Yes, sir. It's just that the people are not on God's time. Let's look at this in Romans chapter 13. I'm going to show you, show you something here. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 1 and, and 2. Now, listen, I just kind of put this in this text just for me on tonight. I have a job. And one of the most blessed things that you can do if you're going to follow me, to those of you all that view us, listen, I have a job to do. And one of the most blessed things for you to do is do these things that I teach you and what I teach in the Word of God. If, if, if there's any wrong, if I lead you wrong, God is going to get me. Keep that in mind for those people that always saying that what he's teaching them over there <laughs> Look like the others are suffering, and we're moving it right along still. Read it. Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power. Do it again. For there is no power. I'm do the whole verse. For let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Who, who is the higher power in the building tonight? Who is the high priest? The Bible said, let every soul, it didn't make no difference if my mama and my daddy are members of the Bible study group of Israel, that they are older, older than I am. Read the text, sir. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Uh -huh. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Who ordained me, son? Of God. Of God. Man didn't do it. As Amos said, my daddy wasn't no preacher. My granddaddy wasn't no preacher. Well, how did you do what you're doing? God took me. Read your text. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. That's what you're coming against. When you come against what I teach you from law, law time, and, and season, you're coming against what from God? The ordinance. You're coming against the laws of God. Thing can't be altered, say. Come on, read it. Come on down to verse number. Verse four. Uh, verse number. Four. 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 For he is the minister of God. Who am I? For he is the minister of God. Mm -hmm. To thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, mm -hmm. be afraid. For he bear not the sword in vain. Listen, that's why I told you. God will get me if I do wrong. That's the why I'm here just to minister the word of God. Read it. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's it. Read it. Come, come on down verse, verse 11. 11. And that knowing that, and that knowing the time that now it is. Listen here. This is what I want you to know, Saint. Where we at? Verse 11 says, take your time. And that knowing the time. Knowing the time. What time is it, uh, brother? That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now is the high time. Yes, sir. Now let me show you what the high time is as it relates to the time and season of what we're in. 
Let me show it to you. Come on, let's run back at Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Let me show you what the high time is. A lot of people are going through suffering so many things. And if I didn't do anything else, thanks. Again, I'm not trying to get you to join in. I, I like the peace and quiet that I have with the members of the Bible study group of Israel. I want to say it one time, if it's okay with you. Listen, ain't nobody raising hell over here. I don't have to tell this one don't be discord with this family member or this one here not liking this one. I don't have to do that. Nobody's raising hell in here. So I'm not trying to grow a church, Jennifer. I'm pleased with the little people that God has blessed her with here at the Bible study group of Israel. I thank God for you people. You are everything. You're one you're a wonderful group of people. Bless you, brother. Y'all give him five dollars <laughs> when we leave. <laughs> I like that. Are there 55 and let's see. Let's see what this high time is. Read it. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Do it again, son. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I know you think you can get him whenever you want to. Listen, you remember those 71, those people, they said, we bought him to your disciples and they couldn't cure him. And then just the day before that, they would rejoice and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. In your name. But the next day, they couldn't even get a little girl, a little boy here. Do the text again. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. That's my recommendation to you. Well, Brother Mark, how do I know when he's near? Well, I'm going to help you tonight with that. This is why the topic is what it is. Verse 1. This is the season. So let's back up to chapter 1. You want to know how we know? Verse 1. Uh, verse number one, read it. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. Hey, anybody got any desires tonight? Anybody thirsty for it? Anybody got, anybody got any wants? Any of you all? The Bible said, come on, come on, go with Brother Mark to the Word of God. Come on, let's look at it. What are we going to do? And he that had no money, Listen, come ye. When you come to church, and see, then there ain't many people that tell you to come without this. But even if you don't have no money, come on, let's look into the word of God on tonight. I want to help you. I want to find your situation in the word of God. For those that are sick, come on, I got something for you tonight. You name it. Those that are dealing with them little bad children that you didn't punish a long time ago and have to deal with them now. Come on, I got something to help you. Read it. I don't need your money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And God don't need your money, neither do he need your credit to get anything established in your life. You ought to thank God for that. Hallelujah. Some of you all know your credit hadn't did it for you. <laughs> huh? It's hard to even get a credit card. No, if you can't get a $500 limit on the credit card. Two hundred. Huh? <laughs> he don't need that. He's greater than that. Now somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> you all know it. See, members in here know that. Read your verse, brother. Verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? People just pay money in any channel of church. They stand in any prayer line. They go anywhere, drive from country to country, do anything looking for something that God hadn't promised. You need to be aware of time and season. Read it. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Mm -hmm. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Come on, listen to what we got to say tonight. Read it. Here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. I wonder what are the sure mercies, and that's the sure blessings of David. He wants to give you that tonight. Read it, brother. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. That's why we read that in Romans to you. That's what we're doing tonight. Read it. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he had glorified thee. If you, if you let me, I'm going to help God to do that for you tonight and in this season. Read your text. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Six Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let's look at this in Psalm 32. 
I want to show you something here where the Bible talks about the best time, or that there is a most favorable or best time for you to pray. Let's look at, let's look at it in Psalm 32 and verse number 6. six. Psalm 32 and verse 6. Read that for me. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Now, the godly people are supposed to do what, Marquette? Pray unto thee in a time. When thou mayest be found. This is what the godly people are supposed to do. You're supposed to pray according to time and season. Especially, you pray every day. Men ought to always pray. But especially in these times, you're supposed to stay before. This is what I've been telling you, Bible study group of Israel. Especially in these times, you're supposed to stay before. Read it. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come near unto him. Verse Verse number nine. Listen, even with trouble time, they won't come near you. Verse nine said. But ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding. Go back and go back and do your verse again. You left one word out. But ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. When you don't have understanding of the time and of the season. The Bible says you just like a wild horse. You'll run anywhere and do anything. The people of the country know about that one. Read your text, verse number eight. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. Verse number eight. What's my job? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We told you to seek him. We told you to the godly people supposed to be praying to God. Let me show you some of the things that you can ask for. And if you if you got a situation that I don't cover tonight, let me know. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper in the word of God and show you some things. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23 and verse number 14. Bible study group of Israel, make sure all of you all got this. You should, those that's been here a while should know these things by heart. I've been teaching this since 2008, saints, when I learned of it. 2005 and 6, I learned of these things, and I really grabbed a hold to it. And I began to teach this in 2008. And I've ate of the fruit of it for a long time now. Let's look at it, and let me show you what time and season that we're in. Exodus chapter 23 and verse number 14 says, Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee. In the time appointed of the month Abib. For in it thou comest out from Egypt and none shall appear before me empty. Listen, that they come out in this month. Don't make no difference. These people have been in bondage for 430 some years. And they came out in this month. Likewise, so can you and so will you. If you apply these principles. Come on down to verse number 20. 20. Listen at what it says here. Now this is the blessing of just being in this month. And you go back and look at it. The word of God it speaks for itself. Keep it in mind. God to everything there's a time and there's a season. And whatever God do he do forever. So what he did back there in, in Exodus. This is the time. So that song that the brother, wonderful song or lady, whoever sang it, this is my exodus. You ought to just play that in your mind and know that you're coming out. Look at it. Verse number 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Now listen, this is the first promise here. This is one of the great ones. If you, if you get this one right here, brother, you got everything you needed. Look at this. And I'm going to show you this throughout the night. Read the text again. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. One of the first things that the angel is not going to do. They're going to always keep you. You hear me praying that all the time. I never close a prayer without saying that. Lord, I allow your angels to be encamped around us all the time. And then send them before me to clear my pathway day by day. They're there for it. One of the ways to keep you. What's the next? And to bring thee into the place. That's the next place, saints. You remember when Isaiah 55 told you, seek God, call upon his name while he is near? And he told you he don't need your money, and neither do he need your credit to establish things in your life. 
this their jobs to bring things into your life. Come on down, read it. Verse number, verse number 20, 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. If you, keep, if you obey his voice about this season. Prepare your mindset about what he can promise. And what, do, you, what you gonna do for him, God? And do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy and an adversary unto thine adversary. Listen, I've been on the phone telling people that today. Don't be confrontational with other people about anything, especially in this season. You think I'm gonna waste my word, one sip of air to argue with somebody? That I already know, especially if they beneath me. You think I'm going to do this? You think I'm going to waste my time to talk about people just because they said anything about me? God will be an enemy to my enemy. And an adversary unto thine adversary. He promised me this. Verse number 23 says, For mine angels shall go before thee. Now, what are you going to do? The last sentence in the verse. See, this, this is why I don't waste time meddling with things. People are nothing. My angel going to go before me in the last and, sentence in that, in that verse. And bring thee into the Amorites, no, and the, I will the cut. Land, yeah, all right, that's it. And I will cut them off. The angel going to go before you, and all of those that have incensed themselves against you, what are they going to do? I will cut them off. He will do that for you. This is the promise of this season, saints. And I told you I'm going to show you these on tonight. This is why we had to be sanctified. One of the daughters called me about this, and, uh, and, 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 and wonderful young lady called me about it, want to know how do I sanctify myself, and how do I purify myself, and how do I stay there? To the husband and wife, do that mean that you can't have sex? No, that don't mean that at all. Make sure that whoever you, if it's your husband and wife, you should be just meeting together anyway, the two of you all, but make sure they're bringing, not bringing any other spirits in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> let me leave that one alone. But, yeah, I leave that one alone. You want to meet in the presence of God, just, he want to meet with you. He don't want to meet with anybody else. Very important, saints. What verse are you at? 24. 25 says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. That's your money. He's going to give you extra money. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Now look what God promised in this season. How many didn't need it? How many, how many? I was telling one of the mothers the other day some things that happened to me the other day. You know, I don't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody else anything. I went right before him. Right before him. And all things are always, he always make things well. Read your text. There shall nothing cast their youth. No miscarry. Nor be barren in the land. Not barren or any. Keep short. Come on. The number of thy days I will feel, fulfill. I will send now, my. Listen, I want you to pay close attention to this one. I was talking to you all early before we, before we started the message, before we started live, about some things I'd ask God for to do. He, he did it, but it was about a year and a half before he did it. So you never give up on what he's doing. He always have a purpose for that. A lot of times it, it, it's never on his, on his behalf. It's always on us. He's preparing us for something. Let me show you that. Read that, brother. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. He'll do it. Come on, read it. And I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Havite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. Do it again. I will not drive them out from before thee now, in God one said, year. I might not do this for you immediately, but I'm working on it for you. And that's that's what I had to get and settle in my mind. So he said, not that he's going to do it. If you stand on the word of God, if he promised it, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Maybe the, the house is just a little too much for you right now. Maybe the marriage was, was a little bit. Maybe he had to prepare you for some things. But if you asked him of it, he's going to prepare you and then prepare the other things, and he's going to bring it in. Let me tell you why he didn't drive them out. Do that verse, that part again. Let me I show you not, why. Come on. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. He said, I might not do it for you in one year. Because you're not ready. What you going to do for me then, Father? Least the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. Listen, a lot of us, just, in other words, something, brother, we're just not ready for yet. 
takes a little time for him to prepare us or to get us to that point. But what you going to do for me, Father? Because you promised. Read it. By little and little, hmm. I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased. Until thou be increased. Until I be increased. I'm going to do something for you. And it's going to time to talk about this in Peter. Other day, he'll strengthen you, sell you. <laughs> Establish you and then he'll make you perfect. Sometimes we have to go through the little challenge to coming up the mountain or coming up the hill or coming up that, but you're going to get there. He has promised it until you be increased and inherit the land. You're going to get everything that he promised. Come on, read it. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into what, your what hand. What you going to do, God? Deliver. The inhabitants of the land you, into your hand. You are going to get it. So don't, if, if it seems, this is what he told Habakkuk. Habakkuk, if it seems like it's tarry, if it's taking a long time, just wait on it. Read the text. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Hmm. They shall not dwell in thy land. Least they make thee sin against me. That's what he don't want you to do. He's just preparing you. Some of you know you're not ready. I've, I've seen people come in this way. I'm with you, Brother Mark. I'm with you. I don't see him now for some reason. Sister Brown told me that. <laughs> I can still see him. Brother Mark, I'm going to keep every Sabbath. I'm watching you. All right. Read your text, brother. That's it. Uh, for if thou serve their gods, It'll it will snare. surely be a snare it's unto thee. All right, let's go on. Let me show you another. In Exodus chapter 34. Saints, make sure you have these. Listen, to those of you all that's very that, I beg of you to get these. These are the promises. And I'm just taking my time with them tonight. I'm going to show you some things here. Exodus 34. If you don't get in there, and listen, there's many more, but these are the ones that's going to cap everything that pertain to life and godliness. Everything. You can't, what, what, what we just covered there. Pretty much covered it all. But let me show you something else he want to do. Let's look at it. 34 and 18. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread as I commanded thee in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. God is always letting you know. I'm trying to bring you out of some things. I just need your mind prepared. And I'm going to show you this tomorrow. I just need your mind to be prepared on what I'm doing for you. Read it, verse number 23. Verse number 23. Thrice, I'm going to show you what he's going to do. And thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God. Do it again for these brethren. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God. God if, if I bring the men in, God, what you going to do for them? Now, you told me if I bring these men in, what you going to do for them? For I will cast out the nations before thee. I'm going to cast out other people before you. What's been insisting themselves against you? I remove other people before you. And Read. enlarge my, thy borders. Listen, do it again. And enlarge thy borders. How many need that to be enlarged? Or how many just need your own borders? Your living places. And it ain't nothing wrong with having one and then wanting another one. This is something that you people should pray to God about. If you don't have one, just tell God, I want one. I want a house. A man of God went to a woman and he told a woman she wanted a child. And she went up at the same feast where you all celebrate. And that preacher went up and told her, this time next year. He probably could have did it a little sooner, but he knew it didn't need to take, go through the nine-month period. This time next year, you're going to have a little boy. Why can't the people do that for you all? Hmm? Read your text. He going to enlarge your boy? Neither, sh neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go People ain't, up people ain't supposed to be just stealing and taking your stuff. They, they, they're not supposed to be just doing that. The angels of God are supposed to deal with them. Deal with them. You deal with God and they'll deal with them. Let's look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 16. Someone give him a call drop, he said. You need somebody else to read for you? You are. I'm all right. If you got one, let's look at it. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 1. Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Read that for me. Let me get there. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. 16, 16. I'm so sorry. Deuteronomy 16. Thank you. 
Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse number one. What? Come on, read it. Observe the month of Abel. Oh, and observe the month of Abel. Listen, we just bought you into this on the New Year just a couple of days ago. Observe the, observe the first month. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abel, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by How night. How many times is God going to tell you? I'm going to bring you out of that stuff. I like sometimes that song just pop in my mind and I sing it. It won't always be like this. God going to perfect things. Concerning me. Turn it around, yes sir. He turn it around. Well, I showed you last week, I mean the other night, he gonna do it in the first month. He's gonna restore some things for you. Joel too told you he when he was gonna do I'm gonna do it in the first month. Here we are, saints. Let's look at it. Come on down to verse number fifteen. Fifteen says Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord. Thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Now God, if I prepare myself to keep this feet, what you gonna do for me? Because what? the Lord thy God shall bless thee what in you all. Do for me, God? Bless thee. If I keep the feet, what you gonna do for bless me? Bless thee. He gonna bless you in all thine increase, <laughs> in all the works of thine hand. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. God is more concerned. He, every three times that we've talked about these things, He mentioned your money. Now, Isaiah chapter 56 says, Seek him while he might be found, and call upon him while he's near. And then we back up to verse 1 says, Come without money, and come without credit. And every one of these three places here, as it, talk to, as it relates to blessing, that's what he mentioned and laid at your face. Stay before him, saint. He's trying to deliver us from some things. Stay before him on these things, especially in this time. Let's look at this. Let me show you. Let me give you a few, few examples of how God worked miracles in this season. You remember he talked about in Exodus 23, the angels this, the angels this. Let's look at a few of them. Ask uh, Daniel chapter 10, 10, verse 2, and verse number 2. Daniel chapter 10, and verse number 2. We were, we was uh, celebrating Pentecost one day. Give me, give me Zechariah chapter, Zechariah 10 and 1 right quick, Zainab. I mean, you're not going to stay with you. We were celebrating in the middle of a thing one day, and we was, I was teaching on this lesson on Pentecost, and this was probably back 2010 or 11, and it started raining just, I mean, just really, really hard. Really hard. Like it into what it's doing out there now. Now, listen. Look at what Zechariah asks here. In Zechariah 10 and 1 says, Ask ye the Lord for rain in the, time, in the of time of the latter rain or in the time of the rain season. And the Lord will make <laughs> clouds. And what are he going to do? And give them showers of rain. Rain is some, and I don't have time. I'm gonna look at it tomorrow or some other time. Rain is symbolic to blessings. Exodus 34 clearly tells us that. So you know, when it out there, some people are, 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 are all God is trying to do. If I'm talking to you about money, turn over to Exodus 34 and read it. Uh, Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel third round. I want to show you that that hard rain come down. Just thank God for it. Oh God, you you gonna you gonna rain down blessings on me just that hard. And we don't have the time to deal with all of it. But Exodus thirty four and verse number twenty six. I'm gonna show you what rain is symbolic to. And we're gonna come back and visit this one again. Exodus uh, Ezekiel 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 Ezekiel. 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 34 and, 34 and 26. Read it there, son. And I will make them in the places round about my hill a blessing. He's going to make them what? A blessing. I'm going to make them a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down I'm, in his season. I'm going to cause the rain to come down. When you going to do it? In his season. In his season. This is the time. This is the season. It just so happened on tonight. We're teaching this lesson. And it started raining real hard. <laughs> Sister Jennifer, she said, I'm getting this, I'm getting this. What you going to do, son? There should be showers of blessings. What are they going to be? Showers of blessings. Rain is symbolic to blessings in many scriptures. It shall be showers of blessings. blessings. So you all hear the rain coming out there, just thank God. God finna just overpour. He's opened 
the window of heaven and overpouring and overflowing blessing. I need you to keep this in the face of God. Let's go back over here where we were at. Daniel, Daniel. chapter 10. Flip back forward. Daniel 10 in verse number 2. Let me show you. I want you to pay close attention to this. Now, God promised that angelic protection and all of that stuff. Uh, listen, he always come through on his word. And he's still doing it today. Daniel 10 and 2. Read it. In those days, our Daniel was mourning three full weeks. How long? Three full I weeks. I don't know what the man had going on in his life. LD. Three weeks of mourning? My God. I wonder had somebody died. Huh? We don't have record. Let me help you with this. Had nobody died on this one. Now, let me ask you a question, good church people. How many of you all have had things going on in your mind for three weeks? Three full weeks? Yes, sir. Couldn't get it? Wouldn't go to church for three weeks? Wouldn't do this and wouldn't do that? It's rough sometimes. Amen? Hallelujah. Listen, let me help you. You at, you at the right time and at the right season, if you have been mourning for three, four weeks, and then nobody die and you're mourning and you're crying, let me help you tonight. Listen, see, I told you, see, you're not the only one that have went through different things. Read it, brother. Nice. I ate no pleasant pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I. Hold on for a minute. Daniel was sure enough messed up. It's one thing not to eat when you're messed up. You fasted. But you people there, one thing that you got to do, Ellen Duncan, come on, help me with the Bible. Wine will soothe your sorrows. So if you can't do nothing while you, while you mourning, at least some of you people, listen, I got to just have me a good drink or something. <laughs> come on, you know I'm right about it. The Bible talks about that. Wine will soothe your and Daniel said, listen, I didn't even drink no wine. I was messed up, but I didn't even want nothing to drink. <laughs> Read on. Some Give him some more berries, you all. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh, no wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Daniel said, I ain't even anoint myself with all. Read it. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Hmm. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month. What my my The four and twentieth day of the first month. Watch God deliver Daniel and bring him out of some things. When he do it in what month, Mark what? In the first month. And here you are in the first month, the month of Abel. Here you are. I was by the side of the great river, which is here the kill. Mm -hmm. And then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of upas. Mm, mm, mm. I wonder who is that? Huh. I wonder who it is. Let, let, let's read on down through that while you get your mic up. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of a lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like an in color to the polished brass, the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude. I don't know who this is, but I know who I know what revelation describes somebody like this. Ass. Let's read on though. It showed up for him at the first month. Read it. And I Daniel alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. Everybody not gonna see what you see, says. God didn't call everybody. Everybody in your family ain't gonna see what you see. You just stand on what you see and who you know you are. Read the text. But a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. <laughs> Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. What he saw, it, look at it, it just pulled some things from him. Read it. Scared him so bad. Read it. <laughs> For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. He said, I listen, what I saw, I didn't have no strength. I had already been in mourning for three full weeks. And when I saw what this, whatever this was, I'm going to just say this angel brought before me, I didn't have no strength at all. The next word said? Yeah. What the next word said? Yeah. I didn't have no strength. Yeah. Read it. Heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the 
palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a great man beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, Daniel? Read on. And stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Do you remember God promised you? That he would send an angel to aid you in Exodus 23 in the first month if you just prepare yourself. This man had been mourning for something for three, four weeks. Likewise, some of you all. Maybe not praying had been in this time, but in time past, I saw some of you. In time past. Read your text, brother. What verse you at? 12. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Three full weeks in something, LD. And he didn't get it. You remember he told you, I might not do this little by little, but you're going to multiply and you're going to increase. You just need to know, especially the time and season yes, when you should be really, really, really praying before God. Read your text. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Listen, anytime you're in bad trouble, God got angels to come. And listen, if you need another angel that's a little bit more powerful, we got them. We got them by name. Come on, Michael, help him. Read it. And I remain there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Yeah, come on down to verse 19. Say it. It said, O great, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee. Be strong. Yeah, be strong. And when he has spoken unto me, I was strengthening. What happened? Was I was strengthening. Early he didn't have no script. But in the first month, when the angel came, God I was strengthening it. He'll do it for you. Listen, I'm going to show you enough of these things to try to give Bill hope in your mindset to he's doing what he said he would do. And for you to just go back and lay these things before our God. Read it. I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then, he, then said he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? Do you know why I came to you in this first month? And some of you all like that. Why did God come? Huh? You've been mourning for three full weeks. Do you know why God sent an angel to you? Let's see it, sir. And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia? And when I'm gone for He came. Because, see, you wouldn't stop. You were doing it by yourself. Why did he come? I come to be an enemy to your enemy. An adversary. And an adversary to your adversary. I, do you know why? He asked him a question. This mm -hmm. man had been going through something for three full weeks. Wouldn't eat, wouldn't anoint his head with all, and then drink no wine. And then he said, do you really know why I came? Let me tell you why I came. This is the first month. And God had promised that he would manifest himself and do things in this month the way he didn't promise. In the, in the second month, or uh, in the other months, three times of the year, he promised that he would do some things. And if, just if, don't want to, but if I had to go through some things, I would want it to be around these times because he promised me. And I know it wouldn't be long. Read the text. And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. That's Satan, read it. And when I am gone for, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Now hold right there for a minute. And that's pretty rough. He told him, Sister Duncan, listen, I'm going to deal with the prince of I'm going to deal with this enemy here. And, but when I leave... <laughs> I need you to continue to pray, Abigail. You know why? Why I come, son? The verse 20. Lo, the prince of Greece shall come. Somebody but. else might come and try to mess with you. And you tell me with all of these things that God has given us that we don't need to be in his faith seeking him at these times? Bring that stuff out there. Go warm that stuff up and bring it out there so they can go on eat. Let's go. Let's look at this in, in, in Acts, well, chapter, Acts chapter 12, 10, whatever it is. 12. Yeah, 21. What I got on there, verse 21. I thought you read 21. You no, read sir. It? All right, but, read it. but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture. What did the angel say? But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture. What's of noted in the scripture? I will be an enemy to your enemy, an adversary to your adversary. I will send my angel before you. That's what's noted in the scripture. And there is none that hold it with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. None, saints. None. 
Let's look at this in Acts chapter 12. It's so many, it's so many examples in here, saints, to where just thank God for the heavy rain. <laughs> in this season, the first month, the third day of the month, Acts chapter 12. Let me show you something here. He promised the angels. I just I want I want your mind to be assured that he's going to do everything that he promised. Acts chapter 12 and 1. Pay close attention to this story here. A whole lot of good points in it. So pay close attention to it. Read it. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Listen, who, who was he trying to harass Marquette? Certain hands to vex certain of the church. The church. You remember when Satan spoke against God? Who they going to persecute and wow? The church. Let's look at it here. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Hmm. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Listen, he killed James. And because of the good Jewish church people, the Jews, these are probably not the ones that, the original ones, these are the ones that were... Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 say, I know them that say they're Jews they're not. and are not. And they're nobody but the sin of God and the Satan. Look at what this kind do right here. <laughs> See, I can't do this. Read it. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Oh, this is okay. So we're in the first month, right? Yes, sir. All right, then. Let's see. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four Quartinians and soldiers to keep him, intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people. But four prisoners, I mean four uh, God men around him, and they said, we're going to bring him back out to Passover. We're going to go up and keep the feet. Read on. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Peter was kept in, he, he, he did go on, he got into something, but what was the Bible study group of Israel doing? But, come but on, read prayer. That. But prayer was made without ceasing. They went through a few little things, Brother Jalen. But the Bible study group of Israel. Prayer was made without ceasing. They was praying in this season without ceasing because God had told them, listen, I send your angels to help you. I heal you. I bless your money. I do things for you. Read it. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. <laughs> Bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. <laughs> they, I don't know what Peter had did or what what they thought about Peter. He was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains. They really didn't want him to get out. <laughs> That's rough there. Peter had to be like unto you people. Read it, verse seven. <laughs> And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Who showed up? The angel friend? of the Lord in the first month during the time of unleavened bread. Okay, we'll do it later. In the first month, here come an angel of God. Peter in jail. Let's see what he did. And a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up. Get up there, Peter. Read on. Saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Listen, the angels got strength to do that, saints. Read it, brother. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And said, so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment. Come on, Peter. Put your shoes on, son. We got a ride. Come on. We're gonna, I'm going to take you on a ride. Read it. Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. Listen, but some of you all are not going to. God going to do some things so miraculous in your life by way of the holy angels. And you're not going to believe it. But I would that you just believe it. If you're praying and asking God for to do it. Mark 11 said, if thou would speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. If you're praying and asking God to remove it. Mm -hmm. If you're praying for your family members that have different disease in their body. I need you to believe the thing that you're praying and asking them for. I covered everything that pertained to life. And God in this in Exodus chapter 23, Exodus 34, and Deuteronomy 16, what else can you ask him for? You not, and I, I have others that I'm going to show you throughout the season. But listen, I've covered everything for you. What else is it? Read it. 
And he went out and followed him and wished not that was true, which was done by the angel. Peter, but, didn't, even, Peter didn't even know it was called. Read it. But thought he saw a vision. Peter thought he was dreaming back there. Read on. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that led it unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Listen, this big old gate that had to, that let people in and out of the city, when they come up to the gate, the gate just opened up. On his own accord. Had another angel there doing that one. The angel blowed and did. I don't know how I did it. But it opened. And I believe it. Read it. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said. Do what Peter did what now? Come to himself. Peter come to himself. He didn't cut like some of you all. What did he do, sir? He said, now I know of surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. That's it. Yeah. Now I know that God has sent his angel and sent me uh, and, and delivered me from Herod and then from the expectation of these, so, these Jewish people. What was the expectation of the Jews? <laughs> they were going to kill that man. God delivered him, saints. Likewise. He delivered them from Exodus in this season, and he's still delivering men, young men. Bravo. This is why I talk to you about this, on the, not just you, to all of the brethren and all of our young ladies on the prayer line Tuesday morning. God is trying to do some things for the men and women in this season. And if you stay before him, say, it ain't nothing that can hold you. Listen, I'm a living witness. There's not anything that can hold you back from this, young ladies and young men, our mothers and our, and our elder brothers. There's nothing that can hold you back. The only thing that will stop that is going to be you. Now let me show you what he's going to do. And sometimes I know I feel that I need some rest and don't get it. He's going to call for you. And you mark my word. And the second and the third or the fourth watch, he's going to call for you. I don't care if you ain't got but sleep. You mark my word, he's going to wake you up. That's up to you. To where, and you listen, all you got to do is put your petition in. Put your petition in. God, you promised these things. He go, Please, I, and I beg of you to do this. Listen here, just try. Just try it, saints. You done tried everything. Yeah. Some of you all have been turned down from different things in life. That you really thought you should have got whether it was some loan, a position on a job, try him now. This is one of the greatest seasons of deliverance ever in the whole time of the 12 months that we live in. This season. It don't make no difference what it is. And, I, you know, I take time. This is why I beg of people to listen at these things in this, in this, at this time about New Year. This month here, the seventh month is blessed. Pentecost is blessed, but this one is the greatest season of deliverance. And most people mind this is the sad thing, and I don't want you to be like this. Most people mind ain't on it. You know what they're ready for? The average Christian church now, I don't know when Easter is, but they're ready for Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning. All of this stuff that he promised, they overlooked. You're going to stop them down, spend all that money on them dead gum old baskets and them little play plastic eggs. Go get, well, them eggs done got high. I bet they won't do that this year like that. <laughs> I bet they won't be doing them this year. <laughs> how them eggs is. You spend all of your money on that stuff. Say to them, get your mind off of stuff like this that we're talking about tonight. You fooling with some old egg. They're going to give you gas probably. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it is. Well, no, I hope it don't give you gas. You fooling with some old egg that's going to, I don't know what they'll do. Make you some potato salad or something with them. Do something else with them eggs. You waste some time, let them chew and play on them. Hide them under them cars and then cars running over and hide the ear. You ain't doing them a waste. When I said we can come up with some ignorant stuff, boy, if Satan hadn't messed our minds up, the little children got to do that. <laughs> When God told you to set these children down, get them, get them in there for me. When God told you to uh, close that door back there on them, just close that door. When God told, she got it, she got it. When God told you to set your children down, 
on the 14th night and talk to them. For this night is supposed to be a night of much remembrance. He said, in time past, when the young children asked about, God, why are we doing this tonight? You're supposed to be able to tell them. Children don't ask about that. When are we going to have Easter again? Let's read some. Where you at? Verse 12. Verse 12 says, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Ma, where many were gathered to, together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. Peter done got by, he done knocked it, and with that knocking on the door. Now what was the church doing? Anybody remember what the church was doing while Peter was in jail? Praying. Praying. Constant prayer. You praying for Peter to be delivered out? Let's see. Let's see if you really believed in what you did. What verse you at? 14. 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told Pete how Peter stood before the gate. Look, yeah, she heard his voice. She was so happy. She went in there and told the rest of them. They were in there still praying and, and, and worshiping. Read on. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. Listen, that ain't Peter. Who did they say that was? His angel. Listen, that's just his angel that showed up and it sounds just like him. Leave us alone. We're praying for it. Church people, if you, if you don't get your silly self together, this is why Romans chapter 13 said you need a man of God over you to teach you. Amen, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> now is the hard time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Verse 16. Listen here. If you're praying for money, if you're praying for a hug, if you're praying for a house, if you're praying for another house, if you're praying for a new house, if you're praying for a promotion on your job, don't let Satan put doubt in your mind, okay? Please don't. Please don't. Whatever you're asking for, please believe and receive those things because God has promised it. He sent me to say this. When I went over this message tonight, that Romans chapter 13, God told me to make sure I tell you that tonight. And, I, and, I, and I, as I say that, I would be less than a man of God if I didn't show you these things. I would be. I won't, I won't, there's nothing wrong with any of the people in here. How you feel, Chloe? You feel, you feel better? That was way better. And that was just a night, a night and a half ago. And she feel much better. These are the things that God have promised. That's what we want manifested. You know how he did that? Whatever that was. It, was, and it wasn't that Zertex I gave you. It was that. You know how he easily did that? If you can, if you can, now listen to that. This is what the Bible said. If you can receive this, he can do the same thing with the other stuff you're praying for. If you can receive it. If you, if you can. You, that's up to you. And how he took that feeling that you had, whether it was sinus or allergy, you didn't know what it was. Two days ago that you felt one way, and look at today. If you can receive, don't be like them people there were. That just his angel, that ain't him. They gave speaking in the voice of Peter. Don't be like that. Let's look at the next verse. Where you at, son? Verse 16. Verse 16 says. But Peter continued knocking. See, and being on that door. Let me in. And when, he wasn't saying that. He just knocking on the door. I, I can imagine he had got a little upset. He was scared. He had just broke out of prison, right? <laughs> Think about that. He had just broke out of prison. <laughs> Think about it. And it's night. <laughs> Read on, son. Let's see how Peter's door. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with the hand hey, to hold their peace. Hey, hey shut up. <laughs> I just broke out, man. Peter didn't want him to say. <laughs> he know how y'all people, he know your kind. You get to shout and have a block party. Good Peter said, hush. I just got out of there. <laughs> Like, some of these times when I read this man, I sit there and I laugh, crying at Peter. I can see it. And I can see how y'all be doing too. <laughs> Have a block party. I bet they I bet this time you bring the wine and stuff back. He's out. <laughs> I know how y'all do. I see you sometimes. 
Read it. Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Listen, that's all I need you to do, say. Read it, brother. That all of it? And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? Listen. <laughs> Them guys there, look at this now. You remember old, old, old wicked Herod? Keep him in mind. He was going to kill him. Keep him in mind now. It was no, they, they get there, they wake up, them two men there, and where in the world is Peter? What verse you at? Verse 19. Verse 19 says, And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. Come on. You and two, he went you, down. Hold on for a minute. You guys that had him, you all slept with him. You were chained to him. I tell you what I'm going to do. What did he tell the keepers to do? What, Marquette? And commanded that they should be put to death. You kill them boys there. Kill them. Read on. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace, because their country was nour nourished by the king's country. Huh. And, and upon a set day, Herod... What, what verse you at? 21. All right. Now listen here. You remember how God said, I'll be an enemy to your enemy, an adversary to your adversary? I'm going to show you something tomorrow. God said, I kill people. I kill them. And I know you don't see him like that. That try to kill you and mess with you. I be an enemy to your adversary. I let the angel go through there. You the evil angel, and I will kill them. Oh, Herod, he had a whole lot of power. Whole lot of power. Let, let me show you something about it. All this happened in the first month, saints. Right here doing Passover and unleavened bread. Read it. And upon a said day, Herod arrayed in in royal peril sat upon his throne. Herod come out, Herod come out in this tuxedo with his shiny <laughs> shoes on there, these sitting on the throne. Read it, brother. And made oration unto them. Uh huh. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a little God. <laughs> Listen here. When Herod shouted, they said, It is the voice of a God. I can see they're doing President, former President Trump like that. It's the voice of a God. Read it, son. And, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not <laughs> well, God the glory. Oh, what happened, son? What happened to him? <laughs> immediately. Immediately. Now, sometimes blessings are manifested when they fought, when God repaired them back. It took a little time for certain things to happen for somebody. But when God repaired your enemy back, what happened, Mark? What? Immediately. Immediately, the angel, an angel of God did what? Smote him. It killed him. All of this happened in the first month. If you tell me he won't be an enemy to your enemy and adversary, but I need you to wait. I don't need you to do anything but pray. Now is the high time for you to listen to me. Let me give you these last three scriptures and we're going to let you go. Go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Yes, sir. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Mr. Brown, you okay? You got your time? You go with your time? Okay, okay. You all have that ready back there, daughter? You got it ready? You all go help yourself and be real quiet and be listening to me because I don't want you to miss nothing on this one, all right? Uh, go help yourself to, to your food. What time is it? Yeah, go help yourself right quick. We'll, we'll get you out of here in a little bit. Listen. Let, 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 let's read that. John chapter, John chapter 2 and verse number 1. Read that for me, sir. In the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. <laughs> Listen there. All they got the disciples in the marriage there. I want to show you what time is here. Read on quickly. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? <laughs> he was talking a little smart to his mama. Mama would have got us. And, I, and he couldn't, I couldn't have called, man. And mama, she's always been short enough. If I would have called a woman, <laughs> what do that have to do with me? <laughs> oh, I can just see stars now. <laughs> Read on, brother. 
Mine hour is not yet come. Read on. Quickly. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, whatever do it. He, whatever he tell you to do, just do it. Read on. And there was said there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. Take it out and draw up to the night. Now, did you all see how many barrels that was, LD? Oh, you wait till tomorrow night. I got more than that. Just wait till tomorrow night. I got more than that. Read it. <laughs> and they buried. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man that at the beginning of Dod set forth good wine, uh -huh. and when men have drunk, have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou has kept the good wine until now. Uh -huh. He did it. I got to find out what time this is. Read on, verse thirteen. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. What time was this, Mark? The West? Jews' Passover. What time was this? Jews' this Passover. This was during Passover in the first month. Zayna. This was his first miracle that we have on record that he did. Yeah. Sister Brown, you all, that other stuff is in there for you. Keisha finished showing it to you. The other stuff is in there for you. She's going to show it to you. This was during Passover. Let's look at this in John chapter 6, and we have one more, uh, uh, one more example after this one. John chapter 6 and verse number... One. One. Flip over there. I want to show you all this stuff that happened in this season. John 6 and 1. Read it there. Did you tell them about it, Keisha? After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Amen. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were deceased, they diseased. Saw, they saw what, Marquette? They saw the miracles, his miracles. Which he did on them that were diseased. And mm. Jesus went up unto a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. What time of season is this, sir? Passover. We are in the first month in this season. Let me show you what God is going to do. Read. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? I want to get you, pay close attention to this story now. In this, sometimes, sometimes we think so small, LD. I want to show you Philip. Now, quite ask Philip when he saw all of them people, are we going to go to Kroger's or Walmart to get this stuff to buy bread? Where are we going to get the money to buy the bread? I think that's what he had. Read that question again. Ask that question again. <laughs> when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Mm -hmm. And this he said to prove him. He said it to what now? To prove him. Christ said this to prove him or test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Uh huh. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient Lord, for Lord, if we had $200,000, we still can't feed all these folk. Black folk eat a whole lot. <laughs> Read it. That every one of them may take a little. Uh, Come on. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to show you what two small fish and five loaves of bread are in the hands of Christ. I'm going to show you what it is. Read it. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. How many was it, Mark? 5,000. 5,000 people sitting down. Two fish, Zayna, and five loaves of bread. And you mean to tell me, you know the story. I want you to see, go back to verse number four. I want to show you what time is here. And I want you to see. He don't, you remember in, 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 when we started this, we established. Seek him while he might be found. Call upon his name while he's near. And then we went back to verse one in chapter 55. I don't need your money. Come without money and come without credit. He don't need it. If he can take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000, what can your money do for him? I don't think about this. You need to know when it's high time to listen to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's what Romans said. But you need to know when it's high time to learn of these things so that you know what the word of God is saying. Read the text, brother. Verse 4. The Passover, a feast of the Jews. This is the time of season that it was in. 
Go back to where you were there. What verse was it? 11. Verse 11 says. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And look here. They, it was a buffet. They let them eat as much as they want to eat. Read it. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, <laughs> gather up the fragments that come, remain. Come here, come here uh, uh, Philip. Since you want to know somebody go take $2,000, $200,000 one feeder, gather up the rest of it. Read it. That nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the fried How in the bro world did he have two fish and five loaves to start with? And when he finished, likewise with you people. He don't need your substance to do anything for you. He just needs you to be aware of time and season. Read your text. Which remain over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did. Read it again. Then, when, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Truly, he says a prophet. Read it. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into the left, mountain himself. Get on out of here. You listen here. You're not going to make me something... That I, all, I, that I am already am. That's right. I don't, like I said, you don't get wrapped up in no titles and all that stuff. What did they call you at their church? Brother Mark? <laughs> you going to ever graduate? Not, not, not no time soon. I like my position. <laughs> Let's look at this. Let's go to our last place. I want to show you these three Passovers. That was the first one where we turned water into wine. The second one right here where we did this with... Uh, uh, with them, with the fish. Let me third show you Christ's third Passover. Every one of his Passovers, he did something good for the people. This one here, I love it. You think a person could be dead for four days and they could get up? Hmm. I got one better than that. Abraham, our father. <laughs> He's been dead probably four thousand years. You know what? He too. I'm gonna show you that. Our cousin Job, he too. Job asked God to let him die and hide him in the grave. <laughs> he asked for it. <laughs> what did he say, Sister Jennifer? And then and, and set a point in time and remember me and come back and get me. <laughs> Let's look at this last Passover that he kept. Christ, this is his three, all three Passover that he kept during his ministry. Let me clear that up because somebody always looking for little words that I leave out. I know it. I just be in a hurry. But the three during his ministry, these were the three Passover. Turn water into wine, fed the 5,000 plus. Let's see what he do for this man that been dead for four days. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Come here, Chloe. And listen here. Uh, listen here. They were down there in Bethany and Mary and Martha and their they brother Lazarus was sick. Read it. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the no ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This, this sickness is not unto death. What did he say, Mark? This Christ? sickness is not unto death. This one is not unto death. You know, you know why he said that, Sister Jennifer? You remember back there in Exodus chapter 23? Wouldn't be no dying, not during this time, not for the saints. You remember that? Lazarus had died, but God had promised it wouldn't be. So you know what he got to do with Lazarus? Get him up. You got to get up. He going to call for him in a little bit. And he he could have went out and dug the moved stone or dug the dig, whatever. But all he did was call his name. I'm going to show you that in a minute. What verse you at? The end of four. Uh -huh. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Uh -huh. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place now where he, he did, was. Wait a, minute, wait, wait a minute. Now Jesus did what to Martha and, Martha and Mary? He, he, the, he abode. Now, now, what did he do? Read the first part of the sick. Thanks. When he had heard, therefore. Right, start your verse over. When he had heard, therefore. Oh, no, verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. But their brother is sick and almost dead. You love him, but you stay a couple more days. 
That must be what they call tough love. I don't know. We'll see. Read it. Then after that said he to his disciples, mm -hmm. then, let us go unto Judea say. again. Mm -hmm. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of the late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. Listen, he wasn't worried about them. Those same people tried to kill you. I'm not worried about them. You going to go up there again? Yeah, I got to keep the Passover. Read it. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Mm -hmm. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. You all remember that. Read on. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. What did but he say? Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Mm -hmm. But I go that I may awake him out of, his, out of sleep. And he was going to do it too. Read on. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. <laughs> How be it? Listen, they were just like a lot of church folks. It is not. They were just as ignorant as it could be. Read it. How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He's dead, man. Read on. And you look at what he said. He did. And you know what? I'm going to do it my quick. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not here. I'm glad. That I wasn't even over there with him. You know why? That you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go on over there anyway. And that's where it is with so many people. They would, Peter and them had that problem when they were praying constantly. And they didn't believe. Lazarus with the disciples, he told them, they didn't believe. Let's go on over there. Come on, let's go on over there anyway. Verse number 16 said. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. If that ain't stupidity there, I don't know what is. That friend, I don't go to church with everybody. You ever went to a funeral? And in the funeral, while they get up, everybody do the remark. Well, we all got to go this way. Everybody got to do this. Well, won't you, brother, you speak for yourself. And if you want to go so bad and so fast, ain't nothing wrong with today. Today is a good day. If it's a good day for you to get saved, since you keep talking about it. <laughs> you right. They'll say no then. This is, this is, you see, like I said, some of these things, man, hadn't anything changed. What made Thomas, what made twins say that? Let us go that we may die too. Read your text, sir. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Four days later. And remember earlier, he said he loved these two girls. Read it. Now Bethany was near to Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. Verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Mm -hmm. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, mm -hmm. whatsoever thou wilt ask of that, God. That, that's faith right there. Martha said, but I know that even now, even, he been dead four days, but even now, whatever you ask, the father. Read it, son. But now, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou would ask of a God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. He will. Come on, read it. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. In the what now? In the resurrection. Let me help you something, Martha. I am the resurrection. I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the light. I'm the eternal one. I'm your elder brother, I'm your consolator, I'm your friend, your joy, your shalom, your help, your deliverer. Hallelujah. What do you need me to be? Hallelujah. Don't come telling me I know he's going to rise in the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Read your text, son. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he it live. It don't make no difference, saints, and that's what I want you to get in your life. Get that down in your mind tonight. Particle son grabbed hold to that one. Read it. 
And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do it again. Shall never die. Whosoever liveth and, and believeth live it and believe in him shall never die. He have the, he have the power. He have the keys to keep you at that point at bay so that you will never die. Read your text. We're going all the way through with it. Okay. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. Uh -huh. Do you believe? Yes, I do. Read it. The Son of God which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and called it for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town. Listen, he had come out, he had got in there. Mary, you remember Martha ran on out to see him. Mary stayed in there. She was Probably had been, you remember how, how anybody remember how long Daniel had been mourning? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. These girls been dealing with some stuff for four days. She didn't want to go, but she went and she did hear about it. She ran on. Read on. What, what verse you at? 20, 31. 31 says. The Jews then which were with her in the house comforted her. And when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out. Followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. <laughs> then when Mary was come. That's, that's good old church talk there. Read on. How did they do at the funeral? Did they break down time? <laughs> if I tell you, if, if, if Israel got some sense, I don't know what they're doing with it. How did they do? Here's another mock way. How did they look? Did they look like this? <laughs> Brother Boyd told that not for you on the Sabbath. <laughs> but, but they look the same way they look when you <laughs> <laughs> if I, again this is our people that you deal with read it can't the, nobody else do it like us <laughs> see that sadly <laughs> what verse you at 30, uh, 32 verse 32 said then when Mary was calm where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying unto him said the same thing that her sister said Lord if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. He wouldn't have died. Read it. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He did what Mark question. Groaned. Even him. See, this is the fleshly side of him sticking out a little bit, Zayna. He groaned. Everybody else at the funeral is crying. And if you were holding up, I mean, at the, they went at the funeral. You were holding up pretty good. And you saw everybody else crying. Saw that little baby cry. Touched him a little bit there. Read it. What verse you at? 34. Verse 34 said. And said, where have ye laid where him? Where did you lay him at? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus will. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. Hmm. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind. Could the man open the blind eye? Make the lame to walk? Make the leper to be clear? Yes, make sir. the dumb man to talk? Could not he have got this man up in, before we got him in the grave? Listen, saints. Yes, sir. It don't make no difference what state you're in in your life. It don't make no difference what you've been through. If he can do what he did for me. Hallelujah. I know it don't make no difference. I don't think any of you all have been any lower than I have in life. I don't think you have. And maybe some of you, maybe some of you have. But how be ever you're here, as Whippet Goldberg told that man, I'm, you're still here today. <laughs> you're still here. Yes, sir. And you're much better than where you were some time ago. Hallelujah. Read your text. Verse. Verse 36. 36. Then said the Jews, uh, no, th uh, 37. 37. 37. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should have not have died? Yes, he could have. Read it. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, came so, into listen, the grave. Sometimes people, they say some stuff to you and they just make you cry. Yeah, read it. And it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. As his mama told him, whatever he tell you to do in, chapter, in that other chapter back there, you just do it. If he tell you to take it away, just do it. 
If he tell you to go this way, just do it. Do it without hesitation. You don't need the approval of no preacher to do something that God. That's one of the things, man, that got to be really and, and, and hurtful to God. God tell you to do something, you go ask some preacher or somebody else. Come on, saints. Come on, don't, 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 don't do that. Read your text. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, then thou I, shouldest see the glory of God. Then I tell you, if you would, I'm not worried about how long he been dead. If he got a smell or not. Did not I tell you that if you would believe, you could see? Mm -hmm. Did not I tell you in Mark chapter 11, if you would speak, you could see? Sister Smith, did not tell you. Read your text. <laughs> then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Mm -hmm. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. Oh, I love to pray that. Lord, I thank you that you hear me. Hallelujah. And I know that you hear me always. But because of these people that are standing here today, because of them, God. I'm going to read it. You do it. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. And when he does has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> and he and he didn't really have to holler. He could have whispered. Yes, sir. And the spirit of life had to come back in the ladder. It had to. Lazarus, come forth. And just like it was with Christ, when they got to the tomb with him, the gray clothes had to let him go. It couldn't keep him bound in there, that stuff. It had to loose him. Whatever, and I say this to you all in this season, it don't make no difference what you've been bound by. <laughs> it had to loose you and let you alone, Abigail. It got to loose you and leave you alone, Sister Jim. It don't, if, this is the high time. But I got to keep you focused on this. I don't need you trying to do the work of God or the work of angels. I need you to stay focused on what he promised to do for you in this Hallelujah. season. Now, if I can get you to do that, Brother Bo, whatever, whatever have you bound or whatever it is that have tried to hold you down, it's got to loose you and let you go. Read the text on what verse is that? And when he had read it, that verse 44, 44. he reading in, read it. Verse and 44. he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot. Go with back and read verse 43 then. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Listen, he called him, and he had all that stuff tied all up around him. And what did he cry again, Marquette? He said, Lazarus, come forth. And what did he cry? Loose him. I want every bit of that stuff off of him. He didn't speak to the people and tell the people to untie Lazarus. He spoke to the stuff that had him bound. Just as he brought the people out that night, saying, he's doing the same thing. I say that to you. Satan, loose whatever may be upon the people of God this night. Speak that over your life on tonight. Brother, Brother Cordell. I speak that into your life this night. Brother Jatavis, I speak that into your life this night. You at the right, you at the right place tonight. And say sometime, as I said in Romans chapter 13, all you need to do is just hear the word of God and know what to stand on. Give you something to stand on. And to have it done it all, Peter was doing good when he was standing on the word of God. Not standing on the water, but standing on the word. Peter, Lord, can I come? Peter, come. And he was doing good as long as he was standing on the word. Now speak that over your life tonight. Whatever it is that I've had you bound. I talked to you all Tuesday morning on the prayer line about some things. Read your text, son. Verse 55. Do the last part of that verse again. Christ he, said, Jesus said. Loose him and let him go. 
Verse 55. And the Jews' Passover was near at hand. What time was he doing all of this stuff? Passover. Abel. It's for you, Satan. It's for you. God the Father have promised blessing. Go to your keyboard for me for a second. In this Passover season, the first month of the year, he has some things for you. I just want to just say just a verse of a song. This is just for me. <clears throat> and and just sometimes things pop in my mind. I think about that with Daniel. That man went through what he was going through for three weeks of mourning. That's a long time. Seems to be in something like that that you can't really just get yourself out. Uh, it's rough. A lot of people didn't make it. A lot of them didn't make it. I've been through the storm and rain while traveling in this life. I've had a lot of tribulations, oh, misery and scribe. There have been times in my life when I, I was so low. You don't know what it means to be up yet. If you've never been down before, I ask the Lord, we'll leave it, saints. I'll come back and do it. You don't know what it means to be up, saints. If you've never been down before, I've had tribulation. I leave it. I want to sing. I leave it. I guess something popped in my mind. I look at sometimes I look at the other messages and I see some preachers sing the whole time, and so I'm not going to do that. Let me, uh, Sister Brown. Let me have that paper there. To uh, to all of you all that's viewing us on tonight, and I want to uh, um, go back. Give me that paper there. Yes, ma'am. From Wednesday night, uh, and I say to you, Brother Dexter, Brother Dick, God bless you, brother. We appreciate you. I didn't get to, I just got a little excited and didn't get to make mention of some of them. And I see some of you all are back with us on, on, on tonight. Brother Dexter, uh, to my cousin, Brother R.C. R.C., I love you, man. R.C., we're praying for you. God knows we are. We're praying for you. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Mary, little Mary, God bless you. Miss Ember, God bless you. Thank you for being back again and again. Our, our daughter, Sister Kawanda, God bless you just as well. We're praying for you. Mark, wait, come do this name for me. Uh, um, that Daphne. Daphne Blackman, Sister Blackman, God bless you. Uh, and all of the ones, again, that was with us on uh, 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 Wednesday night for our New Year celebration. And to any of you all, any of us all, uh, Miss Thompson, God bless you. Uh, again, Brother R.C., uh, Sister Erlene, Lady Patricia, Ella Stinson, uh, Sister Teresa Kine, our, our daughter Lakeisha, bless you all. And then uh, Anaya Perkins, God bless you. Mother Fanny B., uh, our Tyler brother, Brother Charles, Sister Darian, Brother C.J., God bless you. Um, Emmanuel Richards, God bless you. Miss Robbie uh, Lowry, God bless you. Miss Robbie, thank you all. Listen, now is the time, saints. The Father has promised so many things for us. And you know, for those that's viewing us, you know, I skipped a large portion of my message tonight. And we're going to talk about it because God has promised so many things. When I say it's thousands and thousands and thousands of scriptures in the Bible, Miracles in this season, in this first month, he haven't changed anything. Satan tried to change the timings of God in the mindset of man, but everything what God said is said. I'm going to come back tomorrow and we're going to review Exodus chapter 3 up until Exodus chapter 12, 11 tomorrow. 
We have to get you ready for the Passover. And I want to show you all of these things that God has promised. I want you to know. I want you to know. Listen to those of you all that's really. Brother uh, R.C., uh, listen, man, we're right here in Lamar. We ain't 15, 15 minutes from Holly Spring. We having a we having a uh, our New Year ball t- tomorrow night. We're just going to enjoy ourselves and just just enjoy ourselves in the presence of God in this building. Brother RC, you are welcome to come up and join us tomorrow. Miss Miss uh, Miss Robbie, if you want to join us, you're welcome to join us. Uh, and anyone else that that you know like to come out, it's 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 not a church event. The, the young ladies and young men are going to dress up, and I'll probably be about to clean this one. I think. What you think? I'll probably be about to clean the one more than likely. Yes, sir. No, it is. There ain't no expectation. It is what it is. How about the expectation? What color are you gonna have on tomorrow? I, 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 what color are you gonna have on? You go on blue, I gotta come with some blue. Listen, truly we thank God for you. We love you. For those that you are that's real enough, we love you. Bible study grip of Israel. Hold fast to these things. I'm going to teach it and teach it till he come back and uh, till he return and meet us in the wilderness. These are the things that are going to get us there. Now is the time. It's high time for you to be doing these things. Bible said the group of Israel, if you would graciously stand to your feet with us on tonight. Come on up, brother. Bo. You all right? Come on. We love you. Mother Charles, brother, so glad to see you. We miss you. God bless you. To all our mothers, Mother Duncan, Lady Jemison, God bless you. To all our mother, Sister Brown, and to all of our other young ladies that's with us tonight. And, uh, truly, we're grateful and thankful to God for each of you all. Uh, RJ, bless your son. Uh, we're grateful for you. The brother is going to blow three blasts in your presence on tonight. Which one of you guys want to come pray? I just feel we need to do that. Who want to come pray and speak some blessing directly into the lives of the people? Come on quickly, whoever want to do it. Come on. Just do it quickly. We, we've talked about a lot of things. And I need These things need to be in your life. Come on. Put up your hands. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Father. We want to thank you for your Holy Sabbath, Father. Father, we want to just thank you for your word, Father. For you said in your word, for the sanctify them by their word. Thy word is true, Father. And Father, we're getting ready to sanctify the people, Father, in this season, Father. For we're looking forward to some things, Father. For you told us to sanctify ourselves, to separate ourselves from things, Father, that are unholy. Father, so we ask you to just continue to purify us, Father. Father, to wash us with your, wash us with your word, Father. Father, we ask you to just continue to just be with us, Father. And Father, we speak life, wholeness, wealth, and, and peace upon the people, Father, in this season, Father. Father, we ask you that no one be barren in the land, Father. For you said in your words that if we would just stick with your word and walk your commandments, Father. Father, for we know that we are under the covenant of the blood, Father. And, Father, we just want to thank you for your blood in this season, Father. For we know that, Father, you're going to pass over, Father. And, Father, we're looking forward to it, Father. When you sprinkle, Father, when the priest sprinkle the blood upon the people, Father. Father, we're just looking forward to these things in a season, Father. Father, we ask you to just let us not miss these things, Father, d- d- due to our, our iniquities, Father. Father, we ask you to just remove all sin out of our mind and out of our thoughts, Father, and out of our deeds, Father. We ask you to just continue to be with us, Father, and strengthen us in this time, in this season, Father. Father, for we, we are seeking you while ye may be found, Father. And Father, we ask you to just continue to strengthen our mind, Father, strengthen our heart, Father. Father, give us the tongue of the learn, Father. Help us to speak life over ourselves, Father. Help us to speak wealth over ourselves, Father. Father, just help us to speak positive things over ourselves daily, Father. Father, we ask you to continue to be with the people that are watching, Father. Father, let them see that this is the way, Father. If they would just come three times out of the year, Father, that you would do some miracles in their lives, Father. Father, so we ask you to just plant these things on the people's mind that are on the live tonight, Father. Father, continue to be with them and strengthen them. And Father, be with the Bible study group of Israel as well, Father. It's in the name of Emmanuel's name I pray. And as the brethren sound the shofar.
Come on, give him a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the great God of Israel in Emmanuel's name. Listen, we love you. To those of y'all that are hearing us again, Brother RC, you're welcome to come up with us tomorrow night, man. At, at uh, y'all get here around six thirty, uh, yeah, seven. We're gonna have a hap- ha- have a happy tower, happy hour. So before we go into our thing, so you guys come as soon as the sun set, we'll be getting started. Uh, uh, to any any of you all that's been viewed us now, it is it's it. Everything that we do is holy, but it's not a church service. So we're going to dress up, going to listen, just listen to some music and enjoy ourselves and fellowship among. So they all are dressing up when it suits and everything. You ladies come out and, and put your gowns on and come out and, uh, and, uh, and, and be among us tomorrow. We, we have a treat that we want to just, that we do this every year and just enjoy ourselves. So come enjoy, Miss Robin, Brother R.C., you all come and come enjoy. And to all others that's uh, been viewing us, you all come and enjoy. We love you. Enjoy your Sabbath. God bless you. Shalom to you. Shalom.